As a scuba diver, you are probably familiar with the experience of sudden feelings when diving. For example, you see a manta ray or a nudibranch and you feel excited. Or you notice a problem with your regulator and get a lot more alert. There's lots of things that can prompt changes in stress level, both pleasant and uncomfortable. Here's a way to think about how those feelings work in diving. The, ana the anatomy of an emotion is often described as a wave with three key phases. So imagine you're diving, you're having a great time, whether that's enjoying the colour at 12 metres or searching for interesting creatures, exploring a cave or a deep wreck. The kind of diving doesn't actually matter for our explanation It's because the, there's things that can challenge us at all levels. All of a sudden, something happens. Perhaps a trigger fish charges or a vital O-ring bursts. That's the stressor, phase one. That can set off a whole cascade of processes as the body reacts to what's happening, particularly if a threat is perceived. Nerves are activated and, and hormones are released. That's phase two. Phase two is the most intense part of the emotion because of the surge of changes in the body. If it feels too much, like it will overwhelm us, then we tend to hold it back or ignore it. But that, and that may well be effective, because if you've just lost your air supply, then feeling your feelings is probably not going to be your top priority. It can also be that the stress is ongoing, setting off new waves before you've even overcome the first, like a trigger fish that just keeps coming at you. When the stress is over, perhaps you fix the problem, like clearing the water from a leaking mask, then you perceive safety again and the wave can subside. The body lets go of the stress and often there's an outward sign of that release, like a sigh or a long exhale, laughter even, or for the really emotive stuff that can be shaking or tears. That's the body resetting. This happens whenever our attention picks up on something important, whether that's a hazard, a problem or something that you actually want to happen. It can be set off by something outside of us, but it can also be set off by our own thoughts and internal sensations, like the weird ones that sometimes happen at depth. When we hold the wave back, which can sometimes be adaptive, the pressure builds. When we let them through, whether that's straight away or after the dive, they peak and they dissipate. And do you know how long that takes? For a single emotion wave, if extra thoughts or stresses don't set off more, for a single wave of emotion, researchers have found that it's no longer than about 90 seconds, often much less.